Mustafar was a small, lava-covered planet located in the outer rim of the galaxy that would become the site of several important events over the course of thousands of years of galactic history. Thousands of years before the events of the Star Wars films, Mustafar was considered to be a lush and thriving garden world thanks to a relic known as the Bright Star. It somehow harnessed the Force to nourish the planet, and it became sacred to the Mustafarian people. A Sith Lord named Darth Momin traveled to Mustafar to create what he considered to be art. He built a weapon that could obliterate a city, but also trap it in time, freezing his victims in states of agony for eternity. He attacked long before the planet was covered in lava, and the Jedi stopped him before his ritual could be complete. The interruption trapped Momin's spirit inside his helmet, which was taken and stored in a secret vault in the Jedi Temple. Perhaps it was during this attack or some other conflict, but a leader of the planet, Lady Corvax, lost her husband in battle. She stole the Bright Star, hoping to use its power to resurrect him in a machine called the Aeon Engine. But instead, the theft of the artifact spelled destruction. Without the Bright Star, Mustafar's green landscapes turned to fire and ash. What's more, Lord Corvax became cursed, stuck between life and death, some sort of specter left to haunt the halls of his former home. Lava spread to cover over a third of the planet's surface, and the Mustafarian people evolved to survive the harsh new climate. A history of death, destruction, and pain made the world strong in the dark side of the Force, leading to the interest of the Sith, who built shrines and temples there. Eventually, the Techno Union took control of the planet and set up mining operations, but Mustafar's remote location and inhospitable environment also made it a safe haven for criminals like Black Sun, who established a fortress there. When the Clone Wars began, the Techno Union allied itself with the Confederacy of Independent Systems. So Darth Sidious established his own facility on the planet where he planned to kidnap and train Force-sensitive children as future powerful soldiers. But the Jedi Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano uncovered and foiled the plot, rescuing all of the children. Near the end of the Clone Wars, Darth Maul and his brother Savage Press traveled to Mustafar and forced Black Sun to join their growing criminal empire, the Shadow Collective. Many Black Sun leaders lost their lives during the aggressive negotiations. Black Sun was then tasked with kidnapping the family of the leader of the Pike Syndicate to force that criminal organization into joining the Shadow Collective as well. So the Pikes hired Asajj Ventress and the undercover Jedi Quinlan Voss to rescue them. Their assault on the Black Sun Fortress was successful. At the end of the war, Sidious moved the Separatist Council to Mustafar, and when Anakin Skywalker fell to the dark side to become Darth Vader, he was sent to the planet to assassinate the leaders gathered there. With their deaths, the Clone Wars came to an official end, and Sidious was able to take control of the galaxy with his new galactic empire. But Vader was tracked to Mustafar by his old Jedi friend, Obi-Wan Kenobi. They dueled until Vader was critically injured, losing three of his limbs and nearly burning to death in the lava flows that covered the planet. He was rescued by Sidious, who outfitted him in a suit of armor and a breathing mask that would sustain him. Vader spent some time hunting down surviving Jedi with Jedi hunters known as Imperial Inquisitors. When there were no more targets left to kill, Sidious allowed his apprentice to choose a planet to become his domain. Vader chose Mustafar. Having been recovered from the ransacked Jedi Temple, Momin's helmet was sent with the Sith Lord. It had the power to possess anyone who wore it, and so Vader had the help of an ancient Sith artist to design and construct his new fortress. Momin created it with the intent of harnessing the Force to reach the Netherworld, which Vader hoped could be used to resurrect his dead wife Padme. But Momin tricked his fellow Sith and instead resurrected himself. The two battled, Momin was defeated, and Vader's attempt to reach Padme was fruitless. Mustafar and the fortress there gained a reputation of fear across the galaxy, especially in the hearts of any surviving Jedi or Force users. On the nearby moon Nur, the Imperial Inquisitors had their own headquarters where they would train or torture captured Jedi into joining them. Five years after the end of the Clone Wars, the Inquisitors took possession of a list of Force-sensitive children they hoped to kidnap and raise to join their ranks. The Jedi Cal Kestis and Seer Junda traveled to Nur to rescue the list, which they ultimately destroyed to keep the children safe and hidden. Back on Mustafar, Darth Vader brought a larger and larger Imperial presence to his fortress. The lava fumes that were filtered into his lair were corrupted by the dark side, which would drive some of the staff mad, including Vinay, Vader's chief attendant. The native Mustafarians fought against the Imperials on several occasions, hoping to bring the castle crumbling down, but every attempt failed. 
For years, Mustafar was Vader's domain, and he never forgot his obsession of resurrecting Padme. Having learned of the Bright Star, he tracked down and captured one of the last known descendants of Lady Corvax to help him unlock its secrets. The unfortunate Force-sensitive smuggler traveled through underground catacombs until he found the relic, which was immediately taken by Vader, who planned to install it into the Aeon engine. But the smuggler was able to destroy the machine thanks to some help from Lord Corvax. With the Aeon engine gone, Corvax's spirit was allowed to rest, and Mustafar began to heal. But that would take some time. As the Rebel Alliance began to grow to fight the Galactic Empire, a surviving Jedi named Kanan Jarrus joined their ranks. He was briefly captured and taken to Mustafar for interrogation, held in orbit above the planet on the Star Destroyer Sovereign. But his friends and a task force led by Vader's former apprentice, Ahsoka Tano, rescued him. During the battle, the leader of the Inquisitors was killed. The incident led to Vader's personal involvement in fighting against that specific Rebel cell. As the Empire neared the completion of their secret superweapon, the Death Star, a small group of rebels under the orders of Cassian Andor were sent to Mustafar and a facility near Vader's castle to steal an artifact that could help the rebellion. The mission was unsuccessful after the intervention of the Sith Lord, but the rebels were able to learn that Vader was in possession of an ancient precursor to the lightsaber called the Proto Saber. When the Death Star was completed, Director Orson Krennic oversaw a test of the weapon on the planet Jetta. Rebels searching for more information on the station attacked an Imperial Kyber refinery on Edu. The two events caused Vader to summon Krennic to his base, criticizing the man for the problems the Death Star had caused. Krennic and the Death Star were both destroyed in the battles of Scarif and Yavin. Those victories led to more and more systems joining the Rebellion. Some of those rebels found themselves on a damaged ship near Mustafar where they crash-landed. Oblivious to the danger they were in, they ventured inside Vader's fortress for help. Of the five crew members, only three escaped. One of them was captured and tortured by Vinay, but one of his friends returned to rescue him, posing as an Imperial Inquisitor. Three years after the destruction of the Death Star, Vader encountered Sabe, who once served as a decoy for his wife, Padme. She was part of a rebel cell, and despite her multiple attempts to assassinate Vader, he let her live. Disappointed in his apprentice, Darth Sidious maimed Vader and left him for dead once again on Mustafar, demanding he survive without the use of the Force. At the Emperor's request, an assassin named Ochi of Bestoon also led a small army against Vader, but the Sith Lord rebuilt himself where he slaughtered the Separatist leaders long ago and defeated his attackers. During this time, he also came into contact with the mysterious Eye of the Webbish Bog, who provided him with a Sith Wayfinder to help prove his strength to Darth Sidious. About a year later, Darth Vader perished in the Battle of Endor, becoming Anakin Skywalker once more. With his castle abandoned, Mustafarians plotted to destroy it, but they were thwarted by Vinay, who remained in service to his Dark Lord, who he believed still spoke to him. In reality, he was affected by the lava fumes of the castle, which led him to capture and lure the rebels who wandered into the fortress years ago. He planned to sacrifice them to resurrect Vader, but the ritual was doomed from the start. The rebels escaped, and Vinay remained trapped in the castle. Over the next 30 years, Mustafar continued to heal as the castle fell into ruin. A dark side cult known as the Alizmech of Winset began guarding the side of the castle and planted a forest in the Corvax Fen nearby. The iron trees took root, but the Alizmech were slaughtered by Kylo Ren, the grandson of Darth Vader, who came to Mustafar to claim his grandfather's Sith Wayfinder to find his way to Exegol. He too was assisted by the Eye of the Webbish Bog. That's all we can say for sure about Mustafar for now. The Lego Terrifying Tales special claims Grabala the Hutt came to Mustafar to turn Vader's castle into a dark side themed hotel, but I don't think we can count that as canon. Unless you want to, I don't care. But that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.